Now back in 2015 when Hyundai India launched the Creta for the first time ever, I don't think they had an idea of what a blockbuster they had on their hands. Since then, the Creta, they sold over 9 lakh units of this SUV. And not just that, it accounts for 44% of their SUV sales. In 2024, they've given this a major facelift. Now I'm here in Osayan near Jodhpur to drive the new 2024 Creta and find out what it is all about. Hi, my name is Ruf Paliwal, you're watching AutoX, let's get started. Now design is an integral part of any car update and with this one, Hyundai seems to have knocked it out of the park. The previous Creta, well, it was a bit polarizing when it came to design. People either loved it or hated it. With this one, Hyundai has really not left a lot of room for interpretation because this is a handsome looking car now. The bonnet, the grille, the bumper, the lights, everything's been redone on the front. I particularly love these LED lights, especially these LED sequential turn indicators. Sequential turn indicators are nothing new, but the way Hyundai has done them over here, that is something that I really, really like. Now at the back, and I'm coming to the back because there's really no changes on the side, Hyundai has again played the design card really well. I mean, these horizontally laid out tail lamps, this connected LED bar that connects the two tail lamps, all of it is very, very in right now when it comes to design and it looks very, very good. And it also gives the Creta a sense of presence on the road. Not just that, even the bumper that has been majorly reworked looks really funky now. And one major update is the reverse light, well, that's here now. Now functionality wise, not a lot has changed inside, but the one nice change over here is the fact that you now get dual zone climate control, which means the passenger and the driver can have their own different temperature zones, hot or cold, however you like it. But speaking about temperature control, I have to say this. Now, this, this central console over here, it's been redesigned a little. Now, the number of buttons over here, it looks like it came straight out of a James Bond film. But they don't fire any missiles or guns over here. They are basically here to control your screen and your climate control system. Now, the theme of change, it continues inside the cabin as well. For starters, this new dashboard, it simply looks gorgeous. I mean, look at the colors the design, the layering that Hyundai has done over here. It's not symmetrical by any means, but it's still very, very pleasing to the eye. And really, the materials they've used everywhere, just even if it's a hard plastic, it's been done up well enough, that it feels good to touch. Now, not just that, even the screens, they have been given a whole new configuration by themselves. And previously, I was not a big fan of the Creta screen because it was very huge and kind of in the way. But now, they've learned, and if I would switch it on and show you, the screen is now well integrated inside the dashboard, way away from my eyesight, from my eye line, and that's a really nice touch, especially when you're driving the car. The screen in itself, okay, special mention because it's a really nice unit. Obviously, we've seen it in other cars as before, but here, the contrast really seems to be working quite well. The instrument cluster, that is new as well. Both of them are 10.25 inch units. Again, the colors on the instrument cluster are simply mind blowing. The design, well, we've seen this before on the Hyundai Alcazar also. It's been really nicely done, looks very mature, very stylish. And one nice little party trick, when you change the drive modes, the look of the instrument cluster changes as well. And I really love how it looks edgy in sport mode. The buttons, they're big, chunky, easy to use, have a nice tactile feedback to them. But the overall design of it is a bit of an ISO, especially considering the fact that it rests in this company, which is otherwise a very good looking design. It just feels a little tacky. Now, once you get into the second row of the Creta, you won't find a lot of changes apart from the really nice color scheme which continues into the back half of the cabin as well. But the one really cool feature I like, the sunshade, big boon for hot Indian summers. You've also got two USB Type-C charging ports, rear AC vents, and that is all fine. But I want to talk about the comfort over here. 
and in that sense things are a bit of a mixed bag first of all you get this really nice cushion on this top model variant of the Creta which allows you to just rest your head back and even when you're trying to catch a little bit of sleep it feels really really nice but i have a few problems over here first of all headroom not really a lot of it uh, i am 5758 and my head is just a little bit away from the roof now obviously this is because of the panoramic sunroof if you get a low variant of the creta which doesn't have it you'll have a little bit more headroom but honestly a lot of people who are going to be going after the top variant if you're going to have 6 footers sitting in the second row maybe you should to be thinking twice about it apart from that the seats they are really comfortable well scooped out uh, they don't really hold you into place it's a flat section but it is really comfortable you can sink into it but my problem here is that the seat base its length is not enough uh, so that means i'm compromising a bit on my under thigh support apart from that i have really good leg space under the seat in front of me the knee room over here is really really good so as i said comfort in the second row of the creta is a bit of a mixed bag Now as you can see I'm behind the wheel of the Creta so it's time to talk about driving impressions but before I get there I also want to talk about one more thing and that is ADAS the Hyundai Creta it now gets ADAS which has been an up and coming tech for many years now but now a lot of cars are getting it the particular ADAS in this is the level 2 ADAS and while first drives like these don't really give us the best of opportunities to test adas because adas testing adas is very tricky uh, due to the emergency braking and stuff like that we have done a full video on adas systems we have tested the hyundai system in the ionic 5 and the hyundai system is pretty much similar across the range so in terms of adas it is a good tick for the hyundai creta that it now gets adas the system well it works but how well does it work well that's for another time And with that done now let's come to the driving impressions of the new Hyundai Creta. And I'll start with the turbo petrol first. Yes, the Creta now once again has a turbo petrol engine on offer. It's the new updated 1.5 liter engine, makes about 160 PS, 253 Newton meters of torque. But the important thing to remember is with the Creta, it can only be had with a 7 speed dual clutch transmission. Not that I'm complaining. And why? Because I'll start with the engine. First of all, it's a really refined motor lots of times we left the car on shoot uh, my camera person sunil he was shooting the car and i couldn't figure out if the car was on or not despite it being on the entire time so the noise at idle it's literally non existent and even when the rev start to climb the engine stays well below the radar so i think yeah that's a really big plus uh, it's a smooth motor obviously that comes along with the territory of refinement but more than anything else it is a really quick engine as well loves to rev um, despite being a turbo engine and it it just belts you up to speed so so quickly that you think you're doing 70 80 and you look down you're doing probably like 100 110 km per hour so it is a quick quick motor if you drive it sedately it'll give you decent fuel efficiency but if you put your foot down well fuel efficiency is not really going to be part of the discussion anymore and then it's time to talk about the 7 speed dual clutch transmission and i think that is really what binds all of this together the transmission it's a smooth shifting unit it's a quick unit and half the times you don't even know it's there you can't feel the gear changes you're driving sedately yes if you're putting your foot down if you do pedal to the metal then yes you do then you are able to make out the shifts but i mean in general driving condition this is a very very smooth transmission it upshifts quickly it downshifts quickly right when you need it so out of everything the best thing that works for it is that it is really really intuitive and with that done let's come to this one we are actually driving a diesel car right now the keen eye among you must have noticed that there are no paddle shifters behind here because that is only on the turbo petrol with the dct so what is this diesel engine feel like to drive in terms of how the power is delivered well diesel is supposed to be torquey they're supposed to be punchy and it is but it is all been brought down to a linear scale so 
once you put your foot down the torque just doesn't pin you back in your seat it stays relatively comfortable and yet you still have the punch you still have the go to get past cars ahead of you one really nice thing i want to talk about is the refinement now diesels and refinement they generally don't go well together but that's not the case in this car hyundai i mean i'm right now doing around 2000 revs and the engine is hardly audible inside the cabin obviously the engine noise it's not going to be cut out this is a diesel after all but that clatter that insane diesel clatter that drives us all mad yeah that's not a problem anymore the next let's come to the transmission this is a 6 speed unit a good old manual there's not a lot to talk about here apart from the fact that the gates are well defined the shifts uh, the throw is not too long and it's pretty easy to get from one gear to the other with just a little bit of hand movement of your wrist the clutch again light now let's come to the right quality of the hyundai creta and for most parts it's pretty good it's pretty flat high waist stability it's great and most of the times you'll not even feel most of the stuff that's happening outside on the road but that is over smooth surfaces uh what i'm going to talk about now is when the surface gets slightly jittery and the ride of the creta also gets a little jittery at that point of time it's not able to absorb all those bumps really really well it's not the end of the world it's not the most uncomfortable situation but it does take away from that premium from that luxurious experience that the hyundai creta is trying to offer before i end things on the driving front i also want to talk about the drive modes in this car and there are a few like you have eco you have normal you have sport now that is all in the turbo petrol this is the diesel this doesn't get those modes but i want to talk about the turbo petrol just for a sec over here and the thing is those drive modes have been really well tuned even in eco you can drive the car around without really feeling a lack of power normal mode that is the one that i found of to be the best use it's the best sorted mode out over there because if you want power it has power if you want to drive in a sedate fashion it allows you to do that as well now sport really hurries things up a little the throttle response it becomes really quick it if you're not careful it becomes jerky actually but then getting up to speeds quicker becomes a lot lot more fun and a lot more faster now one thing i really want to add about the driving modes while they have been tuned pretty well sport mode actually wears up the steering of the creta on its own the steering's fine it's not the best steering out there but it does the job really well it's confident and inspiring and it's comfortable and easy to use but when you put it into sport mode it artificially weighs up the steering and that is technically not a very nice feeling it actually just makes it harder just chucking the creta into corners because now you're fighting with the added weight of the steering yeah that is one thing i think we could have done without Apart from that you also get mud snow and sand traction modes. Now obviously we are near Jodhpur so finding snow is going to be a little bit difficult but sand well that's in abundance and I had a ball of a time driving the turbo petrol over a bit of off-road patches yesterday and after all the Creta is an SUV so it should be able to tackle light off-roading. And yeah it did. I really didn't have any complaints the ground clearance was never a problem and whenever I thought I might get stuck a little I just stuck the car into sand mode voila done I never faced a problem Well we've come to that part of the video where I have to sum up my thoughts on the 2024 Creta and honestly it's a good car it's a good looking car it's got good features it drives well it rides well But thing is at the time of making this video I don't really know what the price is but at the time you will be seeing this video the prices will have been out and I'm going to leave a comment down below pin the prices what my opinion is on them but let me just say this the Creta is already an expensive car with the outgoing model and this one with its new features is obviously going to see a hike in price now if that's about 20000 say till even 50000 it will seem justifiable to an extent because of all the added safety kit like adas but if the prices start going north of that probably say touch a lakh then then the creta is going to be a bit of a hard sell thank you so much for watching this video 
Now, obviously, we take a lot of effort to bring such videos to you. So if you liked it, hit that like button. If you know someone who's interested in the 2024 Creta, share this video with them and tell them also to like it. And apart from all of that, subscribe to the AutoX YouTube channel for more such cool automotive content. Thank you so much for watching.